Hello and welcome to another episode of Research Radio, a podcast of the Economic and Political Weekly. I'm Johan and today we have with us Dr. Chakali Chandrasekhar to discuss his paper on the Bible Women of Rayalasima titled Dalit Women and Colonial Christianity, First Telugu Bible Women as Teachers of Wisdom. Dr. Chandrasekhar is currently working as a lecturer in English at SRR and CVR Government Degree College Vijayawada in Andhra Pradesh. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today Dr. Chandrasekhar. Thank you Han. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me and making me part of this uh, podcast. I'm looking for a great conversation to have with you. My pleasure. Let's begin with this concept of the Bible woman that you your paper is about. What does it mean to be a Bible woman and where does this concept come from? Uh, Bible woman is someone who spreads the uh, message of the Bible. That this concept started by Ellen Reynard uh, from England. She was uh, while walking in slums of urban London, uh, she was moved and shocked to see the conditions of people. Then she thought uh, these uh, poor people can be approached and uh, supplied Bible by a poor woman from amongst you know their neighborhood so she appointed uh, uh, first bible woman somebody called marian bowers in 1857 uh, her work was carrying out the message of god by selling bibles and uh, tracts and persuading uh, people to buy those and read so when her work was uh, uh, got success she appointed more women from middle class as bible women and later she also established bible and domestic female mission which is called as bdfs uh, to cater the spiritual needs of women in urban uh, slums of england so her concern of uh, uh, salvation towards women in slums in england uh, grew into the concern of salvation of women in other countries including india Mm-hmm. Uh, this idea took root in, in rail sima uh, with the help of she was martha kilpin she was the uh, wife of she and her husband missionary uh, porter edward porter both of them worked as missionaries in kadapa mm-hmm. from 1844 to 1868 almost 24 years they worked uh, renyard uh, to communicate and convey her missionary work and success of bible women she started a magazine called missing link so that miss uh, the, the martha kilpin was one of the readers of the, that magazine when she worked in kadapa mm-hmm. so in 1868 after her retirement uh, martha went to england there she interacted with uh, renyard and uh, informed her the possibilities of opening uh, bible women office in uh, rail sima uh, she wrote series of articles and contributed to missing link mentioning writing Uh, you know the possibilities uh, and necessity of uh, bible women and also encouraging readers to support and donate money so that bible women could be appointed in rail sima so with her efforts uh, you know bible women uh, in 1871 martha ruben and mary wesley uh, were appointed as first bible women in 1871 in rail sima Uh, uh martha martha kilpin worked as a mediator between uh, you know bible women and uh, bdfm mm-hmm. uh, to get salaries uh, for them and other supplies so these local bible women uh, from kadapa they were accountable to uh, martha they uh, they submitted their uh, reports you know their whatever they did the work and uh, in turn martha uh, uh, submitted those um uh, reports to rainyard so that way uh, bdfm financial uh, contribution as well as efforts of uh, martha you uh, know shaped the uh, bible women in rail sima uh, you know in large will uh, in general in telugu region mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so rail sima it is said that rail sima is the reason where christianity started Uh, in entire andhra region the first mm-hmm. uh, missionary work protestant missionary work started in rail sima i didn't know that there, there was a lot of trans- missionary transactions in rail sima by catholics as well as protestant missions so mm-hmm. then i thought let me work on it because by in 13 in 2013 uh, there were kandamal incident happened in orissa uh, 
um, this anti conversion bills also slowly started then i thought what actually happened uh, uh, you know in history in conversions dalis conversion um, i wanted to know actually my reasons own history of christianity my own reason mm mm-hmm. then um, i i didn't even know where the material is available what kind of material i had to look because in my university i think i was second or third person who started to work on this kind of research work mm-hmm. so my senior uh, you know informed me about charles wallace uh, uh, research fellowship i applied to that i got i was selected for that fellowship and other hrc network fellowship that gave me that was turning point for my research that gave me you know access to archival material of lms and spg mm-hmm. which are located in oxford and uh, so as after reading that material i could see the names of the places which i knew mm-hmm. in kadappa karnool anantapur then i did field work ethnographic field work i went to those places uh, i interacted with the church fathers bishops and current christians there and elderly people from dalit community Uh, whatever they know they offered me some books of their forefathers and history books church history books i could see what we say what we call you know um, uh, plates and uh, tomes mm-hmm. names of mysteries so th- it was very interesting in that process i came across these names uh, bible amma is there bible woman is there Mm-hmm. uh I initially i didn't get that but while reading these records then i realized oh, the actually bible women concept is still there in rail sima mm-hmm. so i i just want to confirm so uh, mary wesley and martha ruben were local women from rail sima who were then made bible women yes and who are the first bible women in that area yes i see okay could you tell us a bit about uh, rail sima yeah Rail Sima uh, uh, is currently part of Telugu speaking uh, state of Andhra Pradesh India uh, during pre colonial times it had it had enormous prosperity uh, but at the end of the uh, during the 16th century uh, with the fall of Vijayanagara empire uh, um, what we say it lost its glory then it changed into the hands of the rulers like Mughals Marathas Nizams Tipu Sultan in 1800 uh, nizam ceded uh, ballari kadappa karnool to british so it was called as ceded districts mm-hmm. in colonial records it is addressed as a ceded districts the name rail sima was replaced to ceded districts from uh, 1928 mm-hmm. uh, it changed the hands of the rulers and uh, it became the uh, battle ground for uh, rulers so no ruler unfortunately paid no attention uh, paid attention to the development of the region or welfare of the people even british also uh, neglected the region mm-hmm. uh, in addition to these geographical conditions of rail sima like uh, um, you know low uh, rainfall and uh, limited water resources made the region uh, one of the poorest regions in the madras presidency consequently it was prone to famines so this mm-hmm. history this background is helpful to understand socio economic political conditions of the region as well as as well as the people of the region particularly dalis uh, who were the second largest group of uh, rail sima region and to understand um, the context of you know dalis uh, everyday discrimination and uh, their encounter with uh, christianity mm-hmm. uh, in your paper you also note that these women who were reading the bible and interpreting the text was something that was very striking for other people in the village could you tell us a little more about the significance of women and particularly dalit women being able to read and interpret scriptures yeah yeah um, actually when bible women uh, reading was uh, one of the important features of uh, bible women uh, when uh, martha and uh, mary and bathsheba as bible women when they read the bible uh you know there were examples where you know local people astonished to see these women uh, for instance when uh, mary mary was appointed as bible woman in medical dispensary mm-hmm. after you know whenever we, 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 her job was when patients come to dispensary uh, she uh, talked to them and read portions from bible so one day after reading the uh, portion from the bible the, uh, the men who were sitting listening her they said her look at this lady uh, 
I know she is very privileged. They directly told her, "You are a very privileged woman. Uh, we don't have this opportunity of uh, reading, uh, you know, book. We don't know. We can't even read a single line. Mm-hmm. Uh, compared to you, you know, uh, 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 there is a lot of contradiction between you and us. Uh, in my family, we are uh, around some five six members. Uh, after doing our everyday duties, you know, uh, we get two three hours free time." if we are able to read if we know reading you know we could have read good books but now we waste that time in you know gossip and sleeping and quarreling uh, so that's one example where you know the women were astonished and another example also when martha went to village uh, you know to preach uh, uh, she was standing near a village well uh, women who came there to carry water they asked her who are you when martha introduced herself you know after introducing herself they asked her do you read and she said yes i can read hmm. then they asked her uh, read something she picked up chapter 1 uh, from proverbs book and read then women said look at this lady you know she reads without fear without shame so uh, the, 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 what i want to stress is uh, people were astonished to see these women reading because in traditional indian society education was not accessible to women and dalits it was accessible only to uh, men particularly brahmins it was their uh, monopoly mm-hmm. uh, so women and dalits were denied based on caste and uh, gender more than that there were uh, uh, traditional beliefs that were constructed around women education uh, for example in rayalseema people believed that if women uh, learns reading men members in that family will die Mm-hmm. that's that was one notion other notion was if women uh, you know gets education it provokes their gods you know their gods will become angry other uh, opinion was uh, you know uh, women educating women was like uh, placing knife in the hands of monkey so these are all notions mm-hmm. are not just opinions these are all uh, you know deeply ingrained gender uh, biases Uh, which denied the opportunity for women so in this context bible women you know reading the bible uh, uh, get significance mm-hmm. because of this reading only uh, they got the job because of reading they got they they were eligible to get the profession of bible women so by reading they demolished the myth that only certain caste people certain category people only men are able to read Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and also it's not only just reading it is also interpreting the bible it's not only reading the bible but interpreting applying it to the uh, everyday life situations whenever when they were interacting with people for example mary wesley mm-hmm. uh, uh, she was working in dispensary as i told you she was reading contextually uh, uh, where sick, when sick people come she read certain portions from new testament which talks about healing Mm-hmm. so it was comforting to the listeners who were patients similarly bashiba also uh, she was uh, when when a dying uh, woman ca- called her she was reading uh, some portions from the bible which give comfort to the uh, readers so uh, it was uh, they used their knowledge to bring hope and comfort you know to the listeners so Uh, showing that education and understanding could transform lives especially in the context where these opportunities were denied to women for that matter even uh, interpreting the religious texts also it was uh, area of brahmins again uh, mm-hmm. uh, women and dalits they didn't have access to read and uh, interpret uh, teach to the people they didn't have access to hindu religious texts but after becoming uh, christians after becoming bible women they got access to uh, you know bible religious text and uh, they could memorize they could read it memorize the verses apply it, uh, it to the uh, contextually to the needs of people so in a way bible has become a cultural marker it is a symbol it's not just a book for them it is a meta symbol for them mm-hmm. uh, it's a marker cultural marker uh, of their literacy mm-hmm. just one thing i wanted to clarify because you mentioned that they they got the job because they could read is it that they 
knew to read they learned to read first and then became bible women or in the process of becoming bible women they learned to read in the context of these three bible women yes they knew uh, reading before they became I see. bible okay. i think they were appointed because of that the reason was uh, in royal sima see these were appointed in 1871 in royal sima mass conversions of dalits took place in 1850s mm-hmm. after mass conversion movements missionaries established you know schools night schools in every uh, dalit colonies where dalit you know men as well as women got access to uh, you know education they went to schools they learned alphabet mm-hmm. reading so i think that enabled them to uh, you know read i see okay so another thing that i found very interesting in your paper was the use of songs i'm very curious uh, about you mentioned this pre-existing singing culture in rayalaseema and how through the efforts of the bible women the song book becomes as important as the bible for yeah. the christians there yeah yeah so again the skill of singing songs also is a, one of the important features of bible women it is very much part and parcel of requirements of the job rail sima had a long uh, rich tradition of transmitting religious related matters through uh, singing you know songs mm-hmm. for instance uh, bhakti saints in rail sima Uh, vemana and potluru veerabrahmam they conveyed the matters of you know uh, religious matters as well as social issues anti caste thoughts they addressed through uh, verses and uh, songs mm-hmm. later their followers continued the tradition there is also a tradition in rail sima a group of people or wife and husband they toured around the, uh, they toured villages where they stayed 3 to 4 days and during night times they uh, narrated the stories of famous kings and virtuous women uh, through songs mm-hmm. so singing songs has become uh, a part of the social uh, uh, culture of rail sima uh, in even in agriculture also uh, agricultural fields while doing work women uh, communicated through songs you know there were humorous songs uh, songs towards gods songs of various professions and women also sing songs on uh, various occasions uh, such as childbirth and marriage mm-hmm. so bible mm-hmm. women bathsheba mary martha when they grew up by witnessing all these oral uh, culture of singing songs they also developed this skill of singing songs so when they uh, became bible women they used songs as a medium to demonstrate their christian god to people so songs have become a a uh, weapon to communicate as well as uh, to attract people mm-hmm. when they went to uh, villages when they had house visits when they had women meetings uh, they started their preaching their meetings by singing songs so songs helped them to attract people to captivate the uh, attention and minds of you know audience mm-hmm. in a way um, songs also worked as a uh, you know instrumental for them to have self expression to have their own uh, you know expression mm-hmm. so uh, often the gospel story told through the medium of songs attracted uh, more directly and lingered in uh, listeners memory mm-hmm. so whenever uh, they went to uh, meetings they took uh, song book it has become a cultural marker they had in their hands uh, bible as well as song book so these two are cultural markers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um the singing uh, uh, has become over a period of time singing has become a qualification to select bible women mm-hmm. i met a bible woman who is uh, working in uh, still she is there last year also i met her she told me that in her interview bishop asked her to sing a song i see okay. and to read a bible mm mm-hmm. the committee including the bishop wanted to see her how good is she to read the bible and is she able to sing songs she told me that because of her talent her skill of singing songs and reading the bible you know enabled her to get that job mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it is still there the tradition of singing songs reading the bible that culture is still in existence in kadappa rail sima uh, districts Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. So I would like to move on now to something that you have 
you know alluded to and i would like to bring it into focus a little more and that is the question of caste uh, you mentioned in your paper that there's no specific details about the caste identity of mary wesley and martha rubin two of the bible women that you mentioned and do you use certain clues to identify them as dalit i think this is quite interesting uh, could you tell us a bit more about this yeah yeah the caste identity of mary wesley and uh, martha rubin a uh, two binary bible women the kadapa station is not explicitly mentioned in the uh, archival material however by analyzing certain clues and contextual details it is plausible to infer that they were likely from dalit community mm-hmm. uh, i'll provide uh, uh, you know examples uh, in it with the case of mary wesley when she was working in a dispensary mm-hmm. there was a woman called achamma uh, she was from reddy community reddy uh, caste was one of the dominant caste in rayalseema mm-hmm. she came to dispensary to see her relatives who were under uh, treatment so that night it happened that achamma had to stay uh, with mary wesley mm-hmm. so that time mary offered food uh, to uh, achamma then achamma denied saying uh you know if i take food prepared by you it will break my caste mm-hmm. so it gives us you know her behavior mary uh, achama's behavior towards mary you know gives us a clue that it implies her low caste status mm-hmm. because in rails it was uh, only dalis uh, you know uh, who were um, kept as, uh, aside i mean other uh, caste people maintain that social distance with the thought of uh, purification that if we touch you uh, you know my caste uh, I, i will lose the caste so uh, similarly in the case of uh, martha martha uh, reported uh, uh, facing limitations in her outreach she said that uh, i had access and spoke to all caste women except brahmin women i could not approach brahmin women she wrote, uh, wrote that so mm-hmm. this indicates a social hierarchy where martha's position was perceived as lower than that of higher caste so these two uh, uh, you know uh, clues um, uh, help us to uh, assume that they are from dalit uh, community uh, so i also wanted to ask about bachi bas caste right because you mentioned in her case at least that she belonged specifically to the dominant reddy group Uh, while the caste identities of the other two women are not mentioned right so this raises some questions about why her caste is highlighted and what implications it might have had for her role and experiences as compared to the other women no actually bashabas caste also was not mentioned in uh, uh, missionary records mm-hmm. that i uh, found while reading various records i'll speak about it later but i realized that since she is from dominant caste uh, since she was from reddy community she had certain uh, privileges uh, mm-hmm. in terms of accessing uh, uh, certain places act- accessing certain social groups for instance because she was from reddy community uh, she, she she was uh, a brahmin woman in gutti town sent uh, a person to invite bashaba when bashaba went to that brahmin woman uh she read uh, from you know new testament she read john chapter 5 and explained about jesus christ birth his life his death and his resurrection after listening uh, a brahmin lady asked bashaba you know telling you come very often and teach me uh, uh, the spiritual things also um, teach me how to read mm-hmm. so this was not possible for other two bible women who are from dalit community martha and mary mm-hmm. martha explicitly mentioned that i could not uh, approach brahmin women the reason we can understand because in traditional uh, uh, society um, because of their caste uh, status they were uh, uh, you know treated impure um, and they were denied you know um, uh, accessing uh, people so so she had uh, bashaba had privileges because of her caste privilege uh, she could interact with brahmins and other caste people she did not have any kind of objections to 
uh, speak and reach to women okay your paper shows how the bible women managed to carve out for themselves a space in the public sphere but i noticed that although they were trying to get people to convert to christianity a lot of their activities were dealing with practical quotidian concerns does this tell us something about colonial modernity and missionary christianity and what it offered to dalits and women yeah yeah uh, role of bible women like uh, mary martha and bashaba during the colonial era significantly changed the societal position of dalit women traditionally uh, marginalized and uh, th- these women uh, they were marginalized and subjected to uh, discrimination based on caste um, but they found a new platform uh, for public ex- engagement and empowerment in their roles as bible women as habermas uh, you know tells a public space is an arena uh, you know where people come together they do exchange ideas and you know contribute to the formation of uh, public opinion uh, uh, it is open for all irrespective of caste gender and religion but when it comes to royal sima uh, public space was uh, confined only for men mm-hmm. more or less for dominant caste men uh, women were confined women were not allowed to come to public uh, you know places but uh, for these bible women uh, the profession gave them various roles uh, to play to perform to enact in public places such as evangelist teacher and agents of literacy so uh, while their primary task was to spread uh, uh, christianity the impact of these bible women went far beyond just religious instruction so to carry out the gospel they have to travel so traveling always you know it is liberating it 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 shows the freedom the second is uh, 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 visiting houses irrespective of caste mm-hmm. uh, so it, 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 when they entered the houses to share uh, uh, gospel to read the bible they also did other things you know uh, they listen the problems of the uh, family members they offered prayers they gave comfort words uh, they also offered guidance on health uh, hygiene cleanliness and how to raise children all these so uh, so they by doing all these uh, bible women have become peacemakers they have become advisors mm-hmm. within their community so this broaden their role making them influential in many aspects of daily life so uh, this transformation was especially significant for uh, uh, dalit women who had been confined to uh, limited roles due to caste and gender the emergence of bible women broke these barriers providing opportunities for education leadership public participation so it is empowering uh, these women Uh, moreover they also uh, brought other women into public space by encouraging women uh, you know to come and attend women meetings uh, share their experiences sing mm-hmm. songs so it is liberating for other women also to come out mm-hmm. from their everyday activities and you know uh, speak each other so in a way developed a sense of community bible women developed a sense of uh, community and networks uh, among women Mm-hmm. yeah that could be possible only because of uh, colonial modernity and their encounter with christianity mm-hmm. so this is one chapter actually one chapter of my thesis what conversion meant for women i wanted to see what actually conversion meant for women not only men but what it was for women mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you know it it is in the pro- in the process of it's they uh, they did not um they did not they were they were appointed as bible women to communicate uh, christian message mm-hmm. in that process actually uh, to liberate actually their job was to preach about christian god in order to liberate women from their sins mm-hmm. but actually in that process these women they themselves liberated from the you know patriarchal structures from caste structures mm-hmm. becoming bible women it's a job actually it's a profession it has you know it requires certain things 
they had to change their attire they wore nice saree you know they hold the bible they hold the song book mm-hmm. they go around they get salary every month mm-hmm. before that actually they had to work they these were ordinary coolie going women going to labor in, you know to work in the fields of dominant caste people uh, for their work uh, they rarely received the money it was actually grain you know for their work the exchange was grain mm-hmm. it was not money uh, but here it is different it gave them a completely you know their education their conversion gave them a new route to get into this job Mm-hmm. which is a uh, completely you know liberating uh, experience for them mm-hmm. it has become a, a avenue for them to come out from that existing system and you know get new identity so i thought that is what conversion for them mm-hmm. their role was very crucial uh, not only in spreading christianity but shaping or giving new models of gender mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in rail sima they preached about they spoke to men about uh, cleanliness hygienity how to raise children they gave medicine they took along with them they carried you know medicine mm-hmm. uh, rail sima there were often you know famines plague cholera since these people had contacts with missionaries since they worked as mediators between local women as well as missionary they got access to medicine missionary gave them so these people distributed Mm-hmm. there was certain kind of what we say they got authority social respect mm-hmm. which was otherwise denied in that structure mm-hmm. it was this as profession and moreover the education which gave them these you know possibilities opportunities mm-hmm. your paper describes a rather positive reception of the bible women in rayal sima as you were just des- describing i was wondering but are there any accounts of them being met with hostility in the community yeah yeah well the bible women in rail sima generally received a positive reception there were instances where they faced hostility and skepticism so, uh, women in villages initially they viewed bible women with suspicion and you know they mistaken them as fortune tellers mm-hmm. and they also thought that you know these women disrupt the caste system and uh, uh, you know uh, this is suspicion uh, sometimes led to believe that engaging or talking conversing with the bible women bring shame uh, or disgrace uh, for example elizabeth joseph one of uh, another bible woman from madanapalli uh, when she was speaking to a brahmin woman uh, brahmin women uh, formally said that they don't want to listen her they don't want to uh, li- listen about jesus christ because they were not sinners at all and another example is martha uh, you know she also martha also experienced hostility direct hostility while she was near a grain shop she went to women who gathered there and asked them that can i read word of god then the women told you know they said go away we who wants to hear you so this is a direct hostility so these example shows that, you know that they have challenges uh, uh, you know even though uh, they uh, they wanted to uh, spread faith and empower women in that journey uh, they faced challenges mm-hmm. my next question is more a methodological question i'm curious to hear about the sources that you use and how you go about reading between the lines because that's something that you mentioned that you have, you you had to do uh, i noticed that one of the main sources that you've used is a magazine called missing link that was intended to showcase the success of this group but also to gain the uh, funding from the supporters uh, so my question is how do we decide you know how much of this is accurate what is exaggeration and you know uh, how how do we go about that process of reading between the lines when dealing with uh, historical sources nice question uh, johan in researching the experience of bible women uh, mary wesley martha ruben and bashaba i utilized variety of sources including it's not only missing link but there are also other sources like uh, uh, um, lms annual reports 
uh, other missionary journals missionary history books so these materials were uh, i i collected these material from soyas uh, you know london uh, some material are digitized sources which are available online mm-hmm. however uh, these sources have limitations particularly in offering complete details about uh, uh, lives of bible women they don't offer uh, they don't give information about their conversion to christianity um uh, family backgrounds and personal lives so we don't have any written material by these bible women to know about them what was their motive what was their mm-hmm. ideology uh, in which context they uh, entered into this profession mm-hmm. we don't have because they didn't leave any written material so the only available material is um, the, the the missing link magazine and lms annual reports because in rail sima it was lms and spg uh, missions which spoke Mm-hmm. so i have to depend more on uh, a missing link magazine because um, it was um, um, alan reynard who was the key person uh, uh, you know in selecting these women uh, employing these women as bible women so so missing link magazine uh, is basically uh, um, meant for women uh, supporters donors so it recorded only the information which it wants Uh, to the readers so it wants it it communicates to the readers that uh, because of your funding because of your donation because of your prayers uh, these women are doing this work mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. other information is not required for them uh, there is this gap that's why uh, uh, you know we we need careful and um, analytical uh, approach to reading the material Mm-hmm. Uh, uh involving i employed uh, that's why i employed the uh, method of you know reading between the lines and against the grain to uncover uh, more nuanced information uh, for instance as you asked earlier uh, how the the caste identity of basaba was mentioned actually it was not mentioned it is uh, me who discovered that mm-hmm. uh, for instance i got a sense while reading about uh, initially while reading about mary martha and basaba i got, i could sense that there is some difference mm-hmm. uh, mary uh, and martha were not received by brahmins but basheba got very well reception mm-hmm. so why is that so then while reading uh, missing link magazine there was one article by uh, martha you know uh, kilpin was a missionary mm-hmm. um, she wrote an article about a conversion of a woman Uh, for its readers saying see how much your help is working so the story is uh, mm-hmm. a, a woman called ramaka from dom uh, from from nearby village she came to kadapa mm-hmm. to meet her husband uh, uh, missionary edward porter mm-hmm. uh, Mar- uh, martha uh, you know uh, gave her food by thinking that she uh, walked for a long time but uh, um, ramaka denied that food saying you know if i uh, take food offered by you it destroys it breaks my caste i lose my caste mm-hmm. so then she said that you know some year some years back your husband uh, edward porter came to my village uh, he instructed about christianity to my mother and from that time onwards my mother my sister and me we stopped doing idol worship mm-hmm. after telling this by, uh, on and on at the end uh, uh, the, in the article it mentions that now her daughter is working as bible woman in nandyal mm-hmm. in nandyal mission station so by then the woman who was working in nandyal mission station was basheba i see okay. so i realized that the basheba was the daughter of ramaka Mm-hmm. and ramakka caste identity was not mentioned but there was an instant saying uh, my caste will break off if i eat the food offered by you mm-hmm. then i started to search there is another clue for me uh, which tells that missionary edward porter went to her village mm-hmm. so then i uh, took the reports of missionary edward porter he worked in kadapa from 1844 to 1868 then 44 to 68 records i took i started looking for the information in 1856 report i came across this incident you know edward porter uh, uh, wrote saying i went to rago rajapalam mm-hmm. a village there i you know to meet an enquirer uh, from farmer's caste mm-hmm. she was a wife of farmer farmer's caste 
I spoke to her about God. She brought her daughters with her children. Mm-hmm. So there, I realized that he is talking about, uh, you know, Bashaba's mother and her grandmother. Mm-hmm. He did not mention about uh, name, caste name, but it gave a clue that farmers caste. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Rayal Sima, it was Reddies who were the you know land owning community. So mm-hmm. during that time, uh, uh, Reddies were addressed as Shudras or farmers caste. Mm-hmm. in missionary cards that gave me one clue then i read another uh, magazine by lms it is called chronicle uh, magazine mm-hmm. there uh, somebody called moses williams while writing about his work a native worker uh, you know his work among dominant caste people ready people he mentioned saying you know there was one lady in a nearby koilakuntla taluk the ragav rajpalayam uh, missionary Edward Porter visited that village. Mm-hmm. One ready caste woman, she embraced Christianity and before she died, she called me and asked me to take care of her children and lead her children to, Christi- to Christ. Mm-hmm. After sh- her death, uh, her two daughters, Ramaka and Balama, embraced Christianity. I gave baptism to Ramaka. And, uh, you know, th- 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 when I read this, oh, mm-hmm. There is a clear connection that Ramaka is this Ramaka mm-hmm. and this Ramaka's mother name is Hanna. I mean, she. it says that uh, Balama's two daughters also embraced Christianity and recently took baptism and one of the daughters took the name of her grandmother, uh, grandmother's name, uh, Hanna. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not easy to uh, come to conclusion that she was from uh, dominant Redeka. So, this reading between the lines and you know uh, against the grain mm-hmm. uh, helped me to uh, understand this so this is a met- thus a meticulous examination of various reports and publications coupled with critical reading strategies are essential uh, in mm-hmm. piecing together accurate information about the uh, bible women so uh, this missing link is not about telugu women missing link has uh, the reports of uh, Bible women from various countries. Mm-hmm. So one, two pages every ma- every year, two pages, uh, 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 you know, given to uh, Telugu Bible women from Kadapa. I see. Okay. Yeah, that also very less space was given to uh, these women's reports in that missing link. Mm-hmm. Actually, these women, uh, Bible women, write letters to Martha, mm-hmm. uh, providing all their diary, uh, their work. Mm-hmm. So, Martha summarizes this. I see. Okay. There is this, you know, what we say, um, censorship. Okay. So, she was the one who finalized what supposed to print there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is needed for the readers. So, in that way, a lot of information had been buried, actually. this I, this, I wanted to point out this, uh, that their voice was buried mm-hmm. uh, in, the, in, the, in this process of, uh, you know, printing their uh, information, printing their diaries. Since uh, nothing left, since these Bible women recorded or left anything, uh, I have to rely only on the available missionary sources. Mm. So the letters and things that they used to write to the missionaries, no records of those are anywhere? No. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I have to work on, might be there. I have to see where this missing link uh, magazines are located. If I see that, I I have a chance to see the original records if they preserved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For example, this London Mission Society records, original handwritten records are preserved in Soya's archives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, from that handwriting, uh, these people printed certain portions. So there is a variation I could see. So similarly, it might be there. Mm-hmm. And another thing, you know, which strikes me is how they could write in which language because I assume that they didn't know English. Mm-hmm. Martha, Mary, Basheba, they, they, they knew Telugu reading and writing, but not English. But missionary Martha knew Telugu. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So probably these women uh, wrote in Telugu language to her and uh, you know, that missionary translated it to English and printed, submitted for printing. Mm-hmm. An interesting thing is, these women, particularly Basheba, mm-hmm. um, 
she had a privilege uh, i think when she was appointed as a bible woman she was very young mm-hmm. that's why she worked almost some 30 years 34 years something mm mm-hmm. uh, she contributed there was one women journal christian women journal uh, for women something mm-hmm. called vivekavati mm mm-hmm. for it which started in 1909 Bashaba from Royal Sima, she contributed certain articles to that journal. Her articles focus on, you know, raising children as a Christian woman, methods to preach gospel. Mm-hmm. Very interesting, actually. Uh, she got a space into, you know, she could contribute, that literary contribution of her. Mm-hmm. Other two might have passed away by then. Uh, mm-hmm. Mary and Martha, they might be uh, older than, you know. older to bashaba so that is also very interesting where various bible women they contributed their work experience to these journals mm-hmm. it's a new phenomena uh, after 1900 what language was this in telugu telugu okay yeah in my recent uh, that article which published in south asia journal journal of south asian studies it is on vivekavati journal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how i analyzed how these bible women showcased her and you know, displayed her their experiences and all this mm-hmm. that magazine has become a medium for them to communicate about their work mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know what i what i really like about the case of the bible women is that you know it complicates the usual understanding of colonialism you know you already mentioned you know about on uh, how it was not just uh, embracing missionary christianity but also colonial modernity you know and um, or at least we can say that the dalit experience of colonialism was arguably different and when this involves experiences that afford dalit some dignity and pride i feel that there is a reluctance to acknowledge this you know would you like to comment on that yeah yeah the case of the bible women like martha mary bashaba offers nuanced perspective on colonialism particularly in the context of a dalit experience mm-hmm. this view point challenges the conventional understanding of colonialism uh, which is often seen only through uh, the lens of economic exploitation political domination and uh, foreign rule during the colonial era dalits who were historically marginalized and subjected to severe discrimination based on their caste they encountered a unique set of circumstances the advent of colonial rule and missionary activity brought Uh, significant social and cultural changes in their lives these include the establishment of educational institutions hospitals and promotion of religious conversions and social reforms also offering them jobs for dalits this period marked the emergence of public spaces also as i uh, spoke some time back mm-hmm. they got access to uh, public spaces like uh, schools hospitals also church so the role of bible women taken up by uh, dalit women like mary martha uh, exemplifies how colonialism and missionary work provided uh, a venue for empowerment and dignity in a society which is deeply entrenched in caste based discrimination and patriarchy becoming a bible woman offered these women a path to self liberation and public engagement which was otherwise uh, difficult for them in a traditional social structures mm-hmm. Uh, christianity with its egalitarian principles presented an alternative social framework for dalits it offered them opportunities for education participation in public life and sense of human dignity that was otherwise uh, not possible for them and it was denied uh, in rigid caste system christianity also gave them jobs uh, uh, after their conversion dalits uh, entered into missionary structure with various jobs mm-hmm. catechist teachers bible women evangelists you know all these uh, jobs this aspect of colonialism although overshadowed by its more uh, widely acknowledged oppressive traits played a crucial role in transforming the lives of many dalits mm-hmm. i think those are all my questions for today thank you so much dr chandrashekar Thank you Han for uh, uh, this wonderful uh, time a wonderful session I'm glad to be part of this uh, podcast thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity it was my pleasure
I also want to thank our listeners for joining us. You can find the article discussed in today's episode in the show notes. And to experience all that EPW has to offer, head over to epw.in today and subscribe. This is Johan saying bye-bye and see you next time on Research Radio.